Sony could potentially be bringing some facelifts to old games, Saber Wolf tags into Killer Instinct, and Titanfall won't be launching with any modability capabilities. All this and more on This Week in Gaming. All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much for joining me again. This is Alice Side, as always. This week we have some pretty interesting news stories, so let's get into it. So apparently somebody somewhere keeps a pretty close watch on legal steps that the, our game companies make. This week it was revealed that Sony has filed for a patent which will uh, essentially add new content to emulated games. There's a big official title for it. It's uh, Suspending State of Cloud-Based Legacy Applications. And in layman's terms, that's basically, they're gonna be able to add content to pre-existing games that are being streamed without actually changing any of the code in that game. So from my understanding of it, the developer is gonna be able to institute some sort of snapshot or instance in the game that the streaming service, uh, Gaikai, will be able to recognize and implant the new content that the developer has passed along. Some people are extrapolating on this by saying that they're going to be adding a ton of new content to old games. I'm not sure it'll be going quite that far. Me personally, I think that this is going to be more of an application to add trophies and achievements to older games. So when if you're streaming, say, a PS1 or a PS2 game on your PS4 through the Gaikai service, they could essentially add some sort of achievement system where they could use the snapshot system to recognize uh, progress through a game and you get a trophy in a game that previously didn't have trophies. If that's true, and I'm right, I think that's a fantastic idea. Because I just recently started uh, trophy hunting myself and it's quite addictive and I would love to be able to play some of those older games and attain some of those achievements and show them off because Lord knows I've played my share of PS1 era RPGs that I could certainly play through again just to achieve those trophies. So I'm sure more information on this will become available as we learn more about the Gaikai service itself. So hopefully down the line we'll learn more about that. Alright, next up. Killer Instinct just got a pretty massive patch to fix some balancing issues as well as update the character roster. If you're not familiar with the method that Killer Instinct is using, it's basically a free-to-play game where you can buy and pay for characters that you wish to use in-game. If you're unfamiliar with Killer Instinct in general, it's a super fast-paced fighting game with a really in-depth combo system and uh, combo breaker system. That's where the, uh, the term actually comes from. But the free portion of the game comes in the character that uh, is available for you to use uh, straight away. So since launch on the Xbox One, the character has been Jago and it is now switching over to Saber Wolf. There's also packages available to buy uh, groups and clumps of content and characters if you're interested in unlocking more than one character at a time. So that's good to know that Double Helix is sticking to their game plan of rotating the free character available to us. One thing that I should point out is even though you may have been using Jago as the free character, that doesn't mean that he remains unlocked for you. So he's going to be going behind the paywall and Saber Wolf will be stepping out in front of it. All right, and the last story that I wanted to approach this week has to do with Titanfall, the upcoming release for PC, Xbox One, and Xbox 360 in March. So over the holidays, Respawn Studios Vince Sampella tweeted that Titanfall initially will not be supporting mods, which a lot of people have been asking after and clamoring about since Titanfall is just going to be strictly multiplayer. There's no single player campaign or anything so what you get out of the box and whatever Respawn Studios provides for you that's going to be the content that you get. Now that isn't to say that they aren't considering this down the line. Zampella went on to say that they're in discussions as to whether whether or not to implement it at all or or how they would actually go about doing it. Now as you might know there are some prolific modding communities for other first person shooters that are multiplayer only including like Team Fortress 2, Left 4 Dead, even Counter-Strike, which has been around forever. And I think it's actually a good thing to have mod support because it prolongs the life of the game. Now I think what Respawn Studios is worried about is that having modders come in and pump com content into the community will basically kneecap them in being able to continually produce sequels. And as we all know, sequels seem to be the modus operandi for companies to make any sort of money these days. So with all that being said, it's not out of the question. It might happen down the line, but mm, 
Given the way that Respawn and the Call of Duty thing went, I would say it might not happen. In fact, I would, I would probably say that it won't be happening at all. Unless there's a, some sort of hack that allows modding to take place, which would be illegal. So I think that about covers what I wanted to talk about today. As always, if I did happen to miss any part of these stories, please let me know down below in the comments. Or, of course, if there was some other story that I might have skipped over or didn't mention in, in my little video here today, let me know about that too. I might bring it up next week. If this is the first time that you're joining me for your week in gaming, please make sure you subscribe so you can come back and join me next weekend. I always update with the news on the weekends from the previous week and I usually interject some sort of content in the middle of the week as well. I've actually got an idea floating around about a new series called Versus or something along those lines where I compare two games from either the same genre or the same series and declare a winner somehow. Because I think that would be fun in a way and I, it would allow me to use a lot more gaming footage that I've been recording. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I still got to figure out how I'm going to do it or at least the format of it all. So thanks again for joining me. I really do appreciate it. This has been Alicide, and this has been your Week in Gaming. Cheers.